In the last video, we looked at how to bring a base map or change a base map within ArcGIS Pro and to view it within this map view here. We also looked at the table of contents, which is just like what you might see in a book, and in particular worked through these navigational tools that you see under the map tab. So within this video, what I'd like to do is to start having a look at how we're going to create our own new data sets to bring into the table of contents so that we can view them in the map view as well. So to do this, what we need to look at first is the folder structure that ArcGIS Pro created for us when we opened this new project. So just as a reminder, if you, you really need to note down where you're saving all of your stuff because ArcGIS Pro creates all these additional folders for you under the folder that you initially instigate. So I've got my folder up here and you can see on the right hand side all these folders that it created when I opened up my Activity 1 project. Now this is important because this is actually going to be where it's also going to store any new data that I create as well. And in particular, when I create what's called a feature class, that's going to be stored within this folder, which is a geodatabase folder. So that extension there that you see, the GDB stands for geodatabase. Now this is just like any normal database with the exception that it also contains geographic information. So latitude, longitude, or some sort of spatial information so that the data that you create knows where it's located on Earth. So now that we have a bit of an idea of where that folder is, let's have a look at the data set that we already have here. So we've got the map of Australia up here as an example. And what you can see already is that it's visualized using some different colors and shapes, but critically three different types of information. And those are points, lines, and polygons. So if you have a look here, for example, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, and Perth, they're all visualized as points. Now you can see the Darling and the Murray Rivers, Australia's biggest rivers, are visualized as lines. And the border of Australia and its states are all created as polygons. So we have points, lines, and polygons, and these are what we call different types of feature classes. Now this is an important distinction to make because as soon as we start to create our own data sets, the very first thing that we're going to have to decide is, is that data set a point, a line, or a polygon? Now, the additional challenge comes from when you look at this map at this particular scale, you say, well, of course, Brisbane is a point. However, if I was to zoom all the way into Brisbane, we know that it actually is a, is a rather large city. And if I was going to create a map of Brisbane, for example, it might even turn into a polygon. And I zoom all the way in and I see these extra features like the Brisbane River. Well, now it looks like a polygon as well. All the, all the highways are now line data sets. So this is something you just need to be aware of when you're considering the data that you're bringing in or that you're going to create. When you start it at the scale that you're going to be analyzing and viewing it, is it going to be a point, a line, or a polygon? So bearing that in mind, let's go back out all the way and we are going to create our very first data set. Now to do this, we need to go up to the view toolbar to start with. So under the view tab, we have what's called the catalog pane. So let's click on that and we're gonna open this up. Now what this is allowing me to do is to now create a data set within a folder structure. So within that catalog pane that's opened, let's click to folders and you'll see the activity one is there. And remember I mentioned the geodatabase? This is where we're going to store our feature classes or our points, our lines, and our polygons. So it's just like a little tub there for us waiting to have that data created into it. So if I right click on my activity one GDB or geodatabase, what I can now do is go to new and I'm going to go to new feature class. Now the feature class that I'm going to create is going to be called infrastructure. 
Now the reason being is that the aim that I'm going to start my next map in is I'm going to map my James Cook University campus. And I know that on that campus I have different types of blue, green and grey infrastructure. So blue infrastructure being water features, green being all the vegetation and grey of course being the buildings and what you would normally think of as infrastructure. So I'm going ahead and I'm going to create this feature class. So let's call it infrastructure. And like I said, it's going to ask me what type of feature class would I like it to be? A point, a line, or a polygon? Now I'm going to zoom all the way into James Cook University and digitize the features that exist within that. So I'm going to say that this is a polygon feature class and everything that's going to exist in it is going to be a polygon. I may later choose that I also want some line features, in which case I'll create a new feature class for that to do that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and click finish as I do that. It will create my feature class, but you don't necessarily see anything happen as it does that. So let's have another look and make sure that it actually created it. Let's go back into the catalog pane. And now if I go and have a look under my activity one geo database, you'll see that it's got this infrastructure feature class sitting underneath it there. So I'm all happy with that. So now what I'd like to do is just to add that to my map. And I can quite simply do that by clicking it and dragging it over into my table of contents. So you'll see that it's now listed there on top of my world topographic map. I've got my infrastructure there. Now, there's actually nothing existing in that just yet. It's, it's essentially an empty candy jar waiting for me to put all the candy inside it. And the candy is going to be my buildings and my trees and all that sort of thing. So we won't actually see it appear on the map at this stage, but that's okay. So our next step is really to look at how we're going to create information or candy to put into that infrastructure candy jar. Now the first thing that I'd like to do is to actually change my base map. So at the moment it's a topographic base map and I want to go and, and make that an imagery base map because I'm most interested in having a look at the James Cook University campus and the types of features that I'm going to see there. So I've gone and done that now as well. Now the next thing that I might like to do is it might be easiest for me to just search for James Cook University rather than zoom and pan into that myself if I'm not 100% familiar where that is. So I go ahead and I do that and I know that I'm at James Cook University in Smithfield which is up in Cairns. So let's double click on that one which is a wonderful way to quickly and easily go to the site that I'm interested in. And you'll see now that we have a number of different buildings, some rather large buildings, some smaller buildings, some car parks, and a lot of beautiful green vegetation in the area. So this is a lovely campus within the wet tropics of far north Queensland. So my next stage will be now that I, I have my base map exactly where I want it to be and I've created a new feature class, the next step for me will actually be to fill that candy jar or the feature class and I'll go ahead and have a look at that within the next video.